Celebrating 12 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Paula Clancy. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and these are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. And first of all, take a look at our set. Now, you'll notice there's no table, no blue drapes. We actually have a set, and we have to thank for that Paula Clancy from Nouveau Classics. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, times 10 to the 10th power, and then multiply that by thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, that was a great <laughs> thank you. Well, it was my pleasure. This is beautiful. I, I asked her, I said, I want to create a space where people are comfortable in telling their stories. And I said, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how it will come together. And you were like, I got it. I got it, and, <laughs> and you got it, so yep. so thank you. Uh, first of all, what would you call this look? Well, this is a contemporary, obviously, but I've warmed it up by using some organic materials, lots of wood and, you know, accessories that, you know, just make you feel kind of cozy and comfortable, warm. Well, welcome to my living room, your yeah. living room. Yeah, this can be yours after the sale. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ask for the sale. Paula, let me start here. Why do you do this? Because this isn't just about the furniture. Right. Uh, and maybe as a window back into your story of possibility, your answer to that question will help me. Why do you do this? Why, when I said, here's what my dream is, why did you grab that dream and just run with it? And you were just like delighted and I could see the lights going off and yeah. the bells going off in your head. What is that about? You know, it's about creating space for people that, you know, gives them um, a place where they can feel safe, comfortable, happy, you know, and um, it, it's just so important to be in an, an environment where, you know, everything comes together for you. Why? Because it just promotes great feelings. No, 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 no. See, I, I, okay, I'll take the first pass on that. Okay. But you said safe, comfortable, happy. But there's something that tells me there's more to that for you than just creating safe, comfortable, happy. That it has a deeper resonance for you. Well, I mean, first of all, it helps. I get to be creative. Yes. I get to work with great people create yes. space with great people, learn their stories, work with them, take them to a different level that maybe they couldn't get to on their own. That gives me just great joy. All right, so it gives you joy, but does it resonate with your own story? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it does to, you know, to an extent. I mean, it, it goes all the way back to, um, I guess, being a little kid and playing with Barbies, <laughs> you know, and. And instead of dressing them up in the clo in their clothes, I was about creating their houses and building their houses and um, decorating their houses. And once I was finished, I'd rip it apart and do it again because I liked it so much. Um, does that make sense to it you? Makes, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me because as I've talked to people through the years, um, I am noticing this over and over more and more that joy is created by creating joy for other people mm -hmm. right when you make cause and create joy for somebody else it creates joy for you but in all these interviews i've done i've also talked to people and the things that help them like wanting to feel safe comfortable and happy becomes a, a prime driver mm -hmm. and i know just a little bit about your story and i know that you've had to overcome a lot mm -hmm to be in a beautiful space like this. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I grew up with basically nothing, you know, um, in a pretty poor family setting. And um, I guess I, you know, always wanted more for myself. And um, in order to get there, I, I had to work really hard, which I'm totally good with and fine with. I think you should work hard. Um, and, um, I wanted to surround myself with beautiful things and cool people. 
and I feel like I've accomplished that through my work. I, I couldn't be happier, you know, with what I do, with the people that I meet, with the, with the opportunities that have been given to me through my work. It gives well, me great happiness. Well, you, you've given us great happiness here as well. I want to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about your story and how you became comfortable and how you created a safe space for yourself and how you found happiness. This is Anything is Possible. My guest is Paula Clancy. We'll be right back. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. I just wanted more. I wanted to do something with my life, you know, and I wasn't going to be told I couldn't, I guess. You know, I never, ever believed that I couldn't do what I set out to do, ever. Welcome back to Anything is Possible, and you are on the Nouveau Classic set that was created by my guest, Paula Clancy, who was the CEO and the Grand Poobah and the uh, superstar, the <laughs> wonder woman of uh, Nouveau Classics. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you. Um, so we were starting to dive into your story. Yeah. And as we started to dive into your story, when we when we went to break, you were like, you know what? <laughs> I did this. Yeah, yeah, you were. <laughs> right. You know what? I want you to know that I get that. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know why I get it, but I get it. Um, yeah, it's a little scary sometimes when you let people in too much. Why? What is that? Well, you know, you? I mean, I guess you know, people. Some people accept everything about you. You know, right. other people can look at you like, oh, what do you mean she didn't grow up in some wealthy family? And, you know, and so they look down at you for that. So. Seeing you, I see this, I see this person of great possibility. I see a, a bright, tough, smart lady that is in the business of taking nothing and making something out of it. Like you walk into an empty room and you see, you, first of all, you see, the energy or you feel the energy mm -hmm. of the people that you serve yeah. and then you have great facility with design and you know how to match their energy with a space that matches their energy so that they can feel safe and comfortable and happy. Right. I mean that's a very powerful thing to do and I would imagine too being able to put a room together is kind of metaphorical for being able to put your life together. Yeah sure absolutely it is. So, you go from bartender, though, yeah, awesome. to CEO of a company, right. and take me on the arc of that story because that's a pretty powerful story. Well, I, you know, I started out by putting myself through through school. Um, you know, bartending paid the bills. I mean, you know, if you're a good bartender, you can make lots of money. Right. <laughs> And you you learned a lot about people, too. You totally learn so much about people. I mean, it's great because when you're a bartender, you know, you've got so many people sitting at a bar. And so you're changing, you know, the way that you interact with each single person based on how they act with you. You know, so it's great training ground just, you know, for life, I think. Um, and, um, you know, I worked my way through college and worked as a bartender the first three years that I opened my, my business so that I could live. Um, I didn't pay myself and I started out by buying old furniture and fur refurbishing it, painting it, reupholstering it, doing whatever I had to do. Now where would you find this old furniture? Uh, I went to flea markets and thrift shops and you know um, just looked for great design and um, then I would change it and make it more funky, artsy, whatever, and then um, I started buying new furniture. Now, where did you th get the idea to do this to begin with? To start my store? Yeah. Um, well, I was furnishing my own apartment. I had no money. <laughs> so, so I had to thrift shop for stuff, and so I would fix things up, and my friends would come over, and they'd be like, oh, where'd you get that? I want that. And I'd be like, well, I found it. I made it. Do you want one? I'll sell you one. And, um, <laughs> and so that's kind of how it started. So one day I was just like, I think I'll open a store. You know, I had like no, you know, bank account that really could justify me doing that. But um, I started collecting things, and about six months down the road, I found a little space down in Old City and convinced the people to, you know, rent it to me. And I had enough money to pay the rent the first month, but not second month. Really? <laughs> yeah, I had to sell stuff. Why did uh, <laughs> Why did you have to pay your way through college? Well. <clears throat> My father died when I was 17, 
and um, he raised me. I was pretty much on my own, and so um, I wanted to go to college, and um, so if I wanted to go to college, there was nobody else to pay for it but me. Why so. did you decide to go and sit a stop after your father's death? Well, first of all, my father always told me I could do anything I set my mind to, and I totally believed him. Um, he was huge inspiration for me. Um, I, I respected him so much with just the way that he lived his life. He was a hardworking man. He raised me and my um, half brothers and sisters on his own. My, uh, he and my mother divorced when I was three, and he raised us. So I grew up without a mother, which you know made me very self-sufficient and independent at a very young age. My half brothers and sisters were all quite a lot older than me, so um, they were kind of off going to school, getting married, doing whatever, and it was just he and I for a long time, you know, while I was growing up, um, until I was about 12 or 13 when I, when, the, when we um, moved in with my sister. But anyway, so what that meant is that, you know, I grew up really quickly as a little kid, um, which I think is totally to my advantage. I mean, it made me who I am today as far as being resourceful and, and hardworking and ethical. Um, and so you didn't feel sorry for yourself? No, why would I? Absolutely not. I mean, it was just the way that it was, you know. I mean, I didn't know you, what I was missing because but, I, but, I didn't but, have two parents. But you do realize, and, and that's the beautiful thing I love about stories of possibility, is I, I told you this before we came on the air, that probably the cornerstone of all possibility is faith. It is mm -hmm. believing. And this is what you just told me. You lost your father. I know what it's like to lose yeah. my father. Yeah. You lost your father and you said, that's just the way it is. Yeah. You just, you do realize that that's not just how most people, there's something else there. There's, you've got some faith from somewhere and there's, it's almost, if, if, if I'm just doing my general read from right here, it's almost like, you know what, dad? This is the way I will make good on all you put into me. Yeah. Because this is what you would do. Does that make sense? I, totally makes, yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, I've always felt that way. I've always felt kind of special, I guess. And I, th I think that came from him, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just wanted more. I wanted to do something with my life, you know, and I wasn't going to be told I couldn't, I guess. You know, I never, ever believed that I couldn't do what I set out to do, ever. He told you that, though. Right. I believed him. He was right. <laughs> You totally can do anything that you set your mind to. What, what, what would he say? What words would he use? Can you remember a conversation that you had with him? Um, can you remember an actual phrase that he said to you? I mean, Paula, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I mean, really, it was just you can do anything that you set your mind to. I mean, I, I, that sticks out in my, in my memory so much. Um, you know, my, one of my biggest regrets is that I get, didn't get to know him as an adult person. You know, he died much too young. I mean, you know, I was, I was a kid, you know, and there's, there's so much that I don't remember about him. But, you know, one thing that really um, I remember the most about him is how he never spoke badly about anyone, mm -hmm. ever. I mean, ever, you know, and I've tried to live my life that way, too. And I, I know that I've, I've messed up. I, I've said a bad thing here or there, <laughs> I'm sure, along the way, you know. But, you know, really, I mean, that has really stuck with me. Why do you think he did that? It's just who he was. He was just a good person, and, and he was trying to set a great example for his kids and for other people. All right, so I want to go to business school when we come back. I want to take a break, because you start, you, you know, pay your way through college, um, you bartend, you fix furniture and sell it. Uh, you open a storefront with only one month's lease in your back pocket. So you had to sell things. Yeah. But you had to learn about business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take me to business school. I want you to take me to business school when we come back. Okay. All right. This is Anything is Possible. And you are sitting, on, I mean, you're looking at the Paula Clancy design set for Anything is Possible because anything is possible. See? We'll be back. Coming up. That's always my goal, is to give them way more than they expected. And um, hopefully it makes a difference in their life. It makes things just a little bit better. 
This week, our Home Federal Community Spotlight is on the Cerebral Palsy Center, helping those with disabilities prove anything is possible. To learn more and see how you can get involved, visit cpcenter.org. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. My guest is Paula Clancy. And this set that you see that's different than where we normally broadcast is uh, thanks to Paula Clancy and Nouveau Classics. I came to you with a dream and you came to me with the reality. <laughs> so thank you for that. You're welcome. So um, during the break, you said something and it just resonated with me. You said you had a, a professor tell you, <laughs> what? Yeah, he said I'd never make anything out of my life. I think it was because you know I was bartending and, and working full time basically through college. So I, I was a little guilty of skipping class sometimes. You know, not a lot, but you know, I did graduate, but right. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess I skipped his class more than he thought I should, and so he, he told me one time that I would never do anything with my life, never make anything out of myself, and I was like, really? Really? Sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that fits right in with, with who you are, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about that, because I want to talk about what you learned in business, because you bring that energy and that passion to the work that you do, and you built a great business here in Knoxville and in Nashville. Um, what's the first thing you learned about possibility in business? What was your first big business lesson? <laughs> well, I think, you know, when I um, opened my store, I kind of realized there was, a, there was a niche in the marketplace, you know, that I could fill. And um, the way that I started my business with, you know, old furniture and, and little money was challenging. Um, but over time, you know, I built it into what it is today, which is, you know, a high-end contemporary furniture store, you know, where I offer in interior design services as well. So, um, you know, I think first of all, it was a niche. I was doing something that I truly love to do, which I think is key. Right. You have to figure out what you truly love to do and what you're good at, you know, and then you have to educate yourself, you know, because it, even if you love it, you don't know anything right. about it, you're not going to be successful. You know, you, you have to be able to back it up. Um, and I'm a people person. And I'm creative. And so, you know, it was kind of the best of all of those worlds coming together for me. And I like to make money. <laughs> and I like to shop. <laughs> so I can shop, spend other people's money, work with great, cool people, travel. You know, I get to do all of these really cool, interesting things. I mean, I have the best job in the world. I work with the greatest people in the world. Biggest, biggest challenge or failure you've had? Oh, well, wow. <laughs> You know, being in business for yourself as a young woman um, is, is challenging. And um, having a family and trying to balance, you know, your family and work um, is very challenging. I, I'm kind of a workaholic, and so I have to pull myself back a little bit. And Tell me about your family. Oh, well, I have, a, I have a daughter who's 15, I have a husband, and I have two stepchildren, and um, my stepdaughter has a, a little girl, and so, and then my husband's family is, is a huge family here in Knoxville. Um, then I have family in Iowa as well. Wow. So, yeah. So I have, a, I have a great family. I'm very lucky. If you were giving advice about possibility, because your life is a great story of possibility, you said you come from very humble beginnings. Mm -hmm but you're the kind of person that doesn't even want to get stuck on that. Like, no. that's just the way it is. Right. You've built a very successful and growing business, and if you had a, a young Paula Clancy-esque young woman or young man sitting here, and they were wondering, I just had a professor tell me I wasn't going to make anything out of myself. Right. Um, teach me about possibility. What would you tell them? I would, first of all, say, um, what do you love to do? Where, where's your passion, you know? And, and you know, you've got to know that first. Um, and then I would say, then go figure out how to do that. Figure out how to make that your work, you know? Because then it's not really, it doesn't feel like work when you're doing what you love. I mean, I totally love what I do. I mean, I think about it all the time. It never feels like work to me because it gives me so much enjoyment and so much fulfillment. You know what just hit me? You are a possibility person, like on another level though, because every room you walk into, you see possible, mm -hmm. you see possibility. Yeah. 
That's your whole life, that's your whole day. Yeah. And, and so you're in the business of revelation because you see the possibility and then a person gives you their dream and then like us here on the set, you go, in a second. And then I walk in here and I go, that, oh wow. And maybe, that, is that the, the joy driver in all of this? Yeah, you know, I guess it's, you know, getting to know you, like when you guys came in, I, I wanted to learn a little bit about, you know, what you were looking for, kind of understand your style, because I can't just push my style on, on everyone right. as much as I would like to. <laughs> kidding <laughs> um, you know but so you have to you have to learn about your client um, and then you have to bring it to life you know you have to respect their their wishes but you also want to take them out of the box a little bit you want to push them a little bit and, and take them to a place they can't get to on their own you know and then hopefully they're just like wow this is this is totally what I was looking for you know that's always my goal is to give them way more than they expected. And um, hopefully it makes a difference in their life. It makes things just a little bit better. It does make things better. And uh, I want to thank you personally uh, for being a possibility person. I think the story arc of your life is a story of possibility. It's, it's the story of a woman who looked at her life and rearranged the furniture <laughs> and made it a comfortable, safe, happy place. But then that you spend your life doing that on a regular basis and that you live with this energy of possibility, that's a blessing. And plus, uh, this is a blessing too. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time on Anything is Possible.